we got that negative one, so we know that this happened when theta was equal to 3 pi over 4. Or if you want to translate that, that's uh, 135 degrees. So either way we look at this, we can find slopes from angles, we can find angles from slopes. I'd say that this one's probably a little bit more tricksome for you because you're going to actually have to do a little bit of work on it. This you can probably just plug in a calculator if you memorize like the 0.877 thing, you know, oh, that's like 3 over 2, yay. Or whatever you, you, does you, does anyone with me, I memorize those, I don't want to look them up. Uh, but if you, if you do this on a calculator, it'll actually work out for you. It probably won't give you the square root of 3, but you can figure that out. Here, you're going to have to use a unit circle. If they give you a slope, you're going to have to find the angle to which sine over cosine makes that value. It's going to be something, you might have two of them. Uh, it's not going to matter you that the same exact value of the angle. Choose either one of them. It'll, it'll work out the same. But find the angle to which you're getting that value. Do you guys see that the process here? I know I went very quickly through this. Do you see the process? Yeah or no? How many people feel okay with, with this? Does it take a little bit of work to get handy on that? Yeah, probably. Probably a little bit more work to carry out. Um, let's see, one more thing I want to go over. Let's talk about the distance formula real quick. It'll wrap up our very first section here. Are you sure there's no questions on this hangs of inclination anymore? We get time. So if I give you this on a test and I say I want you to find the slope if the angle is pi over three, you do it. Could you do it if you had a unit circle? Yes. Oh, okay. That's a good question. Uh, if I say the slope is one half, can you find tangent where the angle would give you? one half. Could you do it with a unit circle? Okay, practice that stuff. That's what I'm looking for. I don't care. Sure. To be honest with you, this is very much review stuff. Uh, what I'm trying to get you to, to get back familiar with the tangent, sine, cosine, secant, cosecant, cotangent ideas because we're going to move way past this. We're going to be using this within some problems, all right? So this isn't going to be a problem. This is going to be within some problems. You get it? It's kind of like factoring isn't everything in algebra. You just use factoring in everything in algebra. You get, you get the analogy? So that, that's kind of what, what we're doing here. We're going to use a lot of trigonometry in this class. We're going to be doing things called derivatives and integrals, and they're all going to involve trig functions. So you've got to know the trig pretty well to be successful. Uh, people say that you go to calculus to finally fail algebra and trigonometry. Okay, you made it this far, but it's not the calculus that's going to hold you back, I promise. It's going to be your algebra and it's going to be your trigonometry. I guarantee it. The calculus is actually quite easy. Uh, it's those concepts put together with calculus that makes it kind of hard. So if you're good at algebra and trig, you can be fine. Absolutely fine. You stick with this class. Okay, shall we? Distance formula in about a minute and a half, then we'll call it a day. Let's do distance formula. We're going to do it the same way that we did our slope formula, which is we're going to pick two random points, x1, y1, and x2, y2. Only this time, we're going to find the distance, distance between them. If we have the x1, y1, and the x2, y2, well, we for sure know that's x1 and that's x2. And this is y1, and that's, well, that's y2. What we want to do now, though, is use something that relates this side, this side, and that side, and that's a right triangle. What relates to that? Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem, absolutely, you're right. If we call this our distance, here's what we can say. We know that this length is x2 minus x1 by the same stuff that we just did with slope formula. We know that this distance is y2 minus y1 by the same stuff we just used on our slope formula. This is the length. This is the length from those corresponding points. We want to find the distance. If we do Pythagorean theorem, we've got d squared equals. What, what's Pythagorean theorem say? Side one square plus side two square plus side. Sure, yeah. yeah. A squared plus b squared equals c squared. Some of you know that. Or uh, I prefer a leg squared plus a leg squared equals a hypotenuse squared, because that, that tells you what you're doing, right? So if we take a leg squared, 
That's this. And a leg squared, that equals the hypotenuse squared. I already have that. Here's my first leg. That's the distance squared plus the second leg. That's the distance squared. Can you guys see the Pythagorean theorem at work here? Do you guys see the leg squared? Mm -hmm. Yeah? This is, this is one leg, right? I'm just squaring it. Here's another leg. I'm just squaring it. And that has to be by Pythagorean theorem equal to the hypotenuse squared. So we got that. The only thing we need to do now, get rid of the square. How do I get rid of the square? square. Yeah, that just means the whole thing. Now, we are going to omit the plus minus because, well, we can't have a negative distance. That doesn't make any sense. So we're just going to have the square root of this entire thing. D equals, by the way, oh, here's a good question for you. Let's see where you're at. Will this square root get rid of this square and that square? No. What do you think? Does it, does it work that way across addition? If it's multiplication, sure. Addition, no way. No way, no. Can't do that. And that's our distance formula. You know what? It, I'm not going to do an example for you because it works really, really, really similarly to our slope formula. Would you be able to, if I gave you two points, would you be able to find me an x1 and a y1? And an x2 and a y2? And plug them in. And not mess the signs up, right? You just square this value, you square that value, you add them. Of course, it's going to be positive, right? Because you're squaring something, squaring something, and adding it. Just don't forget to take a square root. Uh, you can either leave it in terms of a square root or approximate it, give me a decimal answer. How many people feel pretty good about what we talked about today? All right, that's good.